Hi everybody, Peter here, Thailand Bound. Thanks for joining me once again. So I'm going to make a shortish video today and what it is, I've had some subscribers write into me today and they're actually messages. What people sometimes do, they say things like, look, I've got some stuff I want to ask you, but I don't want to leave them in the comments. Can I contact you? Um, and then I'll email you directly. And what I tell them to do is basically leave their leave a comment because I um, I vet all my comments basically I moderate them so things don't go up automatically only for the simple reason you get idiots writing all sorts of stuff um, so what I tell these guys to do I say yeah sure send me a message uh, leave a comment put your email address in it I'll get your email address I'll write to you with my email address and then I'll delete your comments so nobody actually sees their email address and they ask me questions and some of the questions I'll just it's a one liner two liner I'll send back to them and that gives them the answer they were looking for some of them are a bit more in depth and I've got a couple here that I've printed out these are from two different subscribers and I thought when I read them I thought well okay I can respond with an email and tell them what they want to know um, but I thought well instead of doing that why don't I make a video and then if I tell you what they said and then read it back and give you my point of view, then it's um, it's for everybody. It's not just for the guy who's wrote the question, because I'm sure there's other people who have got um, similar questions. Um, some of the questions relate to a video I made a few days ago. Um, I'll get a little bit deeper into that in a moment. But the whole point of a, a decent YouTube channel about somewhere like Thailand, yeah, I can sit in front of a camera and uh, give you my opinion and like I will say opinions are like backsides everybody everybody's got one I'm only telling you um, I'm get, I'm passing on my experience from living there for nearly three decades or visiting there for nearly three decades um, and it's just me talking to a camera reeling off my experiences I think what makes a pretty good channel what makes it even better is rather than somebody just sitting there talking into a camera is to actually take subscribers um, input into the channel analyze it and discuss it which is what we're going to do today so um you know i just think it makes for a much more interesting channel so you know if you're one of those guys and you'd like to ask me something we can if it's something i can reply to you in a one-liner i will do you know how to contact me now i've already mentioned that earlier on um so okay so the first one these are two completely and i have printed them out they're two completely um lots of questions and comments and we'll go into each of them i don't tell people real names or real locations but what it is with this guy I made a video a few days ago and it was called 20 things I hate about Thailand and as I said in that video it was really difficult to come up with 20 things I, it was very difficult to come up with 10 things because I really had to rack my brains um, but I did manage to come up with 20 things that were more of an irritant rather than a hate um, and, and that uh, video did go down well and I got a lot of um, feedback and I had a lot of people ask me questions and in particular this guy now I'll read you what he's written to me and I'll give you my opinion and it is only an opinion guys it's what I think um, it doesn't mean it's right it, I'm only going on past experience I'll share that with you so I'll read out what he's saying to me and then I'll give you my opinion based on my knowledge on the comments he sent to me and then you can make up your mind whether what I'm saying sounds correct or you think it's a load of baloney and I don't know what I'm talking about. That's that's a um, that's the thing about YouTube. You can actually decide for yourselves. OK, so he's started off his message. It says on your point two. Now, what he's talking about is on the 20 things um, that I didn't like about Thailand, that video I made point. The second point I brought up, what I actually said is I said, look, never get into an argument with a Thai. Actually, the point exactly, if we're going to be exact, the point was um, a foreigner is always wrong, even when he's right. And what I'd actually meant by that is you just can't win an argument with a Thai. If you get into a fight with a Thai, you'll end up uh, worse for wear because it will turn five, five, six, seven against one, even if it starts off one to one. And you can't win in an argument because for them it's losing face. You're a foreigner and it's a bit silly really, but that's how it is. And you just won't win an argument, um, even if you are right. So that was my point too. Now, they, they, so what I'm going to read to you is, is based on that point. So he's wrote, let's just call him, um, I don't know, Adam for the sake of the uh, video. Okay, so Adam's wrote, on your point two, never argue with a tie. You address the symptoms, but in my opinion, you did not address the root cause and the reason why I would never live there. Okay, so let's have a look at what he's written there. Um, 
do I, do I actually need to address the root cause? I mean, there's so many root causes. I'm talking about don't get into an argument with a tyre. You could cut them up on a junction if you drive. You could um, have a, a, a disagreement where you could walk away. But instead of choosing to walk away, you stand there and argue and, you know, try to, as a um, self-entitled Westerner, you try to prove your point that you're right and he's wrong. What I was actually saying in that video is just don't get into an argument with them. If there's a point to be argued and in your country, you would argue, don't do it in Thailand because you won't win. Um, you know, it might be something very, very simple. I'm trying to think of an example now. Um, you know, whatever it is, you know, in the West, you might start arguing with somebody about a point that you feel is right and they've made a mistake. What my point to the video was, don't get into an argument with a tie because what will happen is it will develop it will get loud, his friends will join in, and before you know it, before you know it, it will become fisticuffs and you'll end up the loser. So I don't really need to address the root causes. All I'm saying in that video, and I'll reiterate it again today, is don't get into an argument with ties because you will not win. Okay, so that's what I meant by that. And as far as um, the last bit you put on there, um, you put and the reason I would never live there. Well, I, I don't think, you know, I mean, we, we discuss all these points, good things, bad things about Thailand. I don't think it's really a reason not to live there. If you don't want to live in Thailand, that's your prerogative. Everyone's got personal choice. Um, I don't think there's enough bad things there to stop somebody living in Thailand. There's a lot of good things. You've just got to adapt. And, you know, there are irritants. There are things that are harder for foreigners to do than Thais, especially if you don't speak the language. But it's still a great country. I mean, you, you've got to take the positive and kind of dis dismiss the negative. So, you know, I don't think it's a, a good enough reason to say why you'd never live there. But again, it's your personal choice. Um, OK, so let's go on with Adam's, um, his message. I've cut a lot of it out because it was quite a long one. I'm only, I'm, I'm only reading out what's relevant for this video. Um, so the next section of his message, it says, from watching the videos, I have come to understand that there is a two tier or caste system in Thailand. Once Farang, or foreigner, yeah? Once Farang, always a Farang. There is, a two, there is two social ladders in Thailand, one for the locals, the other for everyone else. No matter how generous and helpful a Farang may be, he, she can climb up the Farang social ladder all the way to the top, but he, she will never will always be below the lowest rang of the locals ladder. Am I wrong on this ob observation? Okay, so Adam, in my opinion, yes, you are wrong. Um, there's foreigners in Thailand who have gone on to do great things. There are foreigners who are famous musicians, entertainers. Um, I, I don't think there's a two-tier system. I don't think there's a class system as far as foreigners and Thais. There might be a class system among, amongst Thais themselves. But what you've got to remember... You know, even in the UK where I'm from, you know, I mean, if a foreigner's in a certain situation, if we were in a restaurant and I'm not going to name the country, but say a foreigner walked in and he was trying to order something, you know, you're not going to you're not going to show him the same level of respect, I guess, as your own countryman, because you think it I know it's wrong, but you think it doesn't really matter. And I don't think there is a, a two tier system in Thailand. I just think it's just a case of like. You're a foreigner, and if somebody in your country is a foreigner, you're going to be, as much as you'd hate to admit it, you are going to treat them slightly different as you would your old countrymen. So I think that's all it is. And that, again, it's just my opinion. Um, okay, so this one, I've got a lot to say on this one. On point number nine, ties versus Farang pricing. So what point number nine was in that video where I said 20 things I don't like about Thailand, point number nine was I said I don't like the racism and the two-tier pricing system. And if you've never been to Thailand, um, something that's very normal, and this is not private industries or private um, setups, it's run by the government. Things like national mon uh, monuments, parks, temples, they all have a two-tier pricing system. So there'll be a sign on the gate, Thais 30 baht, uh, foreigners 100 baht. So it, it's perfectly normal in Thailand to say, well, if you're a foreigner, you're paying 100, 200 baht. But if you're a Thai, you're only going to pay 30 baht. Um, and that's the point he's he's going to talk about now. And he said, I have to go back to a lesson I have learned in 1985 in, Monte in Montego, social justice. It wasn't just because I was a tourist, even locals would pay more. He's on about... He went to buy some fruit and veg from a seller. This is what he said earlier. I haven't read all this out. But basically, he went to the market to buy some fruit and vegetables. He spoke the language, obviously, but he wasn't from that area, I understand. Um, a local bought some vegetables, was charged a certain price. He understood what they were charged. Based on that, he made his decision to buy from there. 
they charged him a lot more than the person in front and he was livid because he thought he'd been ripped off. But now he's reflecting on it and what he's saying is um, social justice. It wasn't just because I was a tourist. Even locals would pay more if the seller deemed that they would were better off and give breaks to the less fortunate. With our Western fairness mentality, we don't want to pay more than any other local. But that begs a question, is that really fair? So since I come from a privileged place, I do not mind paying a bit extra, like the examples you give with the taxis and the tuk-tuks. And again, that was me saying about the taxis ripping us off merely because we're foreigners and tuk-tuks as well. But that happens all around the world, doesn't it? Um, I wouldn't have a problem paying 100 baht to enter a park that the Thais only paid 30 baht. He's written baht, but I think he means baht. Um, Thais, just by living there, uh, contributed in many ways for the government to pay for the park. Uh, the entrance fee is only for upkeep and administration, the park. In conclusion, due to Thais paying for the park and low wages, I personally think that this is fair. Okay, so let me give you my opinion on this. And again, guys, I do want to stress it is a personal opinion. Um, totally disagree with it. That's kind of like saying... That's like me going into a designer clothes shop, looking at a guy buying a designer shirt for a hundred US dollars and saying, well, I haven't got as much money as him. So can I have that shirt for 40 US dollars? And the shop should, the boutique should give me the shop because I'm less fortunate than the guy who can pay, afford to pay the hundred um, US dollars. No, I, I, I don't think it's right. And as far as Thais earning little money, and uh, that, that, that's irrelevant. I mean, there's a lot of rich Thais these days. Thailand isn't a very, very poor country like some of the African nations. It's quite a wealthy um, country these days, Thailand. Um, you've only got to walk around Bangkok to see how efficient the place is these days. Um, but I totally disagree. You know, the, look, just for the very point of somebody's feelings, I mean, if I go into a park in Thailand and they told me, okay, the tie is going to pay 20 baht, you're going to pay 21 baht. And I said, but it's, I know it's only one baht, but why am I paying one baht more than him? And they said, because you're a foreigner. And that was the only reason. I would feel really shit about it. You know, I mean, it's just not, in my opinion, it's not right. You know, either it's 30 baht for everybody or, it, you know, you, you just can't have this two-tier um, price system. And then where does it end? So you go for your noodle soup. And the person who owns a stall, do they decide, well, okay, you look fairly wealthy. You're going to pay 100 baht for this soup. You look 50-50, so I'm going to charge you 60 baht. And you look like you're a beggar, so you can have it for 5 baht. It just wouldn't work. Uh, and in my opinion, I totally disagree with it. I think it's totally racist. It's totally unjust. And I just think, especially the government charging for parks, monuments, that sort of thing, it should be one price regardless of how much money you've got. It shouldn't be one price for Thais and another price for foreigners. I mean, what, what would happen if we did that in the UK or you did it in the States? So you said, or even France, okay, to go and look at the Eiffel Tower, if you're French, it's 10 franc francs. If, if you're a foreigner, it's 50 francs. Would people put up with it? No, they wouldn't. It's not right. But again, guys, that's my opinion. Everybody's got one. <laughs> um, okay, so we're finished with Adam. That's his um, message there. And Adam, if you're watching this um, video, I know you will be because you're a subscriber. Please don't be offended. I wasn't having a go at you. I wasn't saying I'm right and you're wrong. People who watch this video might say, think you're absolutely right. And I'm, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about. That's fair enough. That's, um, that's a great thing about the internet. It's a forum. Any, everyone can put their um, opinion across the table. Um, but I wasn't having a go at you. Thank you very much for sending in those comments. I know where you're coming from. It's just I've got a little bit strong feeling. Maybe, maybe I'm a bit old in the tooth. I've been going out there too long, maybe. Um, but that's, that's my personal um, view on it. But thanks for writing in anyway. OK, um, let's move on. Now, here's a guy I've had a lot of communication with. Um, I'm not going to tell you his real name. We'll call him James, and he's from the States. So this is a guy, um, I've mentioned him in, in videos before. This is a guy, he's about 50 years of age, and he enjoys, um, how to say it? He, he enjoys kind of playing with the girls, not, not doing anything bad to them, but when I say playing with them, he likes the chase, the cat and mouse bit, the text in the WhatsApp, and when he's back in his country, you know, they're texting each other, and it's a little game and all this. And he asked me for some advice on bits and pieces, and, you know, as I said in one of my other videos that I've just made, I'm not a guru on Thailand, I'm just giving my um, opinion on my experiences, which I did with um, James. So... What James was saying, he was saying about um, a girl he'd met and she didn't ask for money and, you know, he became, um, 
he went back to his country and he was saying to me, you know, it feels great, I'm 50, but it feels like I'm a teenager again. I know it's all bullshit, but, you know, it makes me feel really good. And he was asking me some bits and pieces and we went back and forth. And I think he's one of those guys, he's just, he didn't say whether he was married or engaged or anything. He, he might well be, he might be single, but he's about 50. And as I say, he enjoys the, um, the WhatsApp and the line and the, the little games, the ducking and diving, and that sort of thing. He enjoys all that. So he sent me a message, a couple of messages, which I've um, consolidated into one here. Um, and I'll read these out. And again, I'll give you my thoughts on what he's written to me. And again, guys, you can um, take what James has written. You can take what I say and you can decide, um, you know, what, what you think is actually um, um, correct. And it isn't always me, as I say, I'm, I'm just a guy talking into a camera. Um, OK, so let's I'm going to quote James. Now, let's read. And, you know, I've got it printed out just so you know, it's not um, made up stuff. It's all genuine. OK, so after six. Uh, let's get comfortable here. That's better. Right. After six weeks of texting, the over social media relationship had ended. So he's already told me that he, he was with this girl and he was texting back and forth and they had this relationship. He hadn't been with her or anything like that as far as I know, but he was back in his country now and they were doing this texting bit. Uh, and this is what he's talking about now. Uh, she spent six weeks texting me every day, three to four times a day, sometimes 30 to 40 minutes of text chat. There was never really substance to the texting, just flirting. She calls me her boyfriend, uh, tells me how much she liked me. Well, she would do, wouldn't she, James, if you're going to... Uh, We'll get onto that later. Okay. Uh, she wanted to be with me, sends me selfies, never really answered any serious questions. Finally, after six weeks, she disappeared for three or four days. Probably got took into one of the islands, I suspect, uh, with a guy. When, when cornered to provide a reason, she finally said she was busy making money. I said I was okay with that. Then she asked for money, first time after six weeks, which she's obviously been um, laying the groundwork, hasn't she, for the, for the kill, as it were. Um, she said she likes money and she likes expensive things. Don't we all? Um, I said, I'm not giving money to someone that I barely know. I never even went out for a drink with her, let alone go back to the hotel. Uh, we then got onto the topic of price. She wanted 15,000 baht <laughs> for a long time. How long? 10 years? 15,000 baht? Um, the, con the conversation got ugly quick. As I told her, she was out of her mind. Prices are not that high. She called me crazy and I was deleted from her WhatsApp or WeChat, he's put here. Uh, and then his, his comments after that was, wow, crazy and fun experience for sure. Glad I never got suckered. Thanks, buddy. The interesting story here is how she invested so much time to land a fish. Good thing. I'm a smart fish. I am sure she has hooked many as her post clearly shows an expensive lifestyle, but strange that she works in a beer bar on Bangla, just odd. I don't think it is odd. I'll tell you exactly what I think's happened here from my um, experience. I think, yeah, she works in a beer bar, but I don't think she just goes out with any anybody. You know, a guy turns up in a pair of uh, sandals, a floral pair of shorts and a vest that says Chang beer across the front. She'll probably blank him and say she's busy. I don't think she'd entertain guys like that. She's probably using the bar to hook up with guys who are a little bit more up the uh, a little bit higher on the um, pecking order, you know, a bit higher on the on the uh, up the tree, as it were. And I think probably what she does, she's probably got a lot of regulars. She uses a bar to hang out, and she probably identifies guys who come along on a nightly basis, and the ones that look interesting, the ones that could take care of her, the ones that, that look like a bit of cash. She's been very selective, and you know, she's running half a dozen guys at the same time. And with you, James, unfortunately, I think what she's done, the texting and the flirting was all. It was all groundwork just to, to kind of reel you in and, you know, which is quite obvious because when she asked for silly, silly money, 15,000 baht, had you been a sucker and paid it, then she's done her job and a couple of weeks would have gone by and she'd need another 20,000, 30,000. You'd have become her boyfriend because you would have been, you know, basically taking care of her. But she's nipped it in the bud. She's obviously a very, very clever girl. She's been um, playing with you for quite a few weeks. Um, doing her job as best as she can. She's realised towards the end because of what you've told her that you're not stupid and all this sort of thing that you're a waste of time as far as she's concerned. So she's nipped it in the bud and deleted you from her um, WhatsApp or Line or WeChat, whatever it is. I mean, why would she keep you? She's asked you 15,000 baht. You said to her, you're crazy. 
Why would she keep you? She's not going to do that. Um, and that, and that's all that's happened. And all she'll be doing in that bar and bag, um, you know, down there in Phuket, all she'll be doing is she'll just be, she's got a fishing rod out and she's looking to hook big fish, basically. That's what it is. So um, no love lost there. Next time you've got a Thailand, just get a friend for the evening and enjoy it for what it is. You don't need to get involved in all that, um, you know, all these people who, who are trying to be clever. Okay, so here's, um, this, we're still on James. This is another, a totally different issue that he's... Um, written to me about right never t i'm reading this now guys so never talked about this one before the gogo -Go bar hostess the, uh, sorry this is a gogo -Go bar hostess but a dancer same thing i guess just doesn't dance no fake boobs not as hot and wears more clothes than the gogo -Go bars anyhow i met her in phuket bought her four to five ladies drinks didn't bar find her the first night but exchanged line on the second night through line arranged for long time he's put lt i presume it's long time after her shift at the gold gold bar so i didn't have to pay her the bar fine really sweet young girl spent a lot of time talking in the hotel room joked about being her sugar daddy explaining what that meant well we started line a relationship via text every day almost two uh two for the past six weeks she hasn't asked for money yet the conversations are more real too um, right, there's another part to this, but I'm going to just discuss what I've talked about because the other bit's a bit scary. Okay, so, right, your big mistake, in my opinion there, James, is you were joking, but you told her you were going to be her sugar daddy. She wouldn't have taken that as a joke. She'd have taken that as gospel. What's scarier about this one, and he's talking about the girl now, um, is that she has a boyfriend who was in the army. Yeah, <laughs> guy, guy makes 3,500 baht a month. That's crazy. She makes at least 10 times what he makes. So back to the scarier part. I think I'm getting myself into trouble here. James, don't think. Uh, don't fool around with girls that have husbands or boyfriends. Thai men are crazy, right? Okay, so there's a bit more of this. No, but I'm going to just answer this little bit. No, not really. They're not crazy. Uh, is an English guy crazy because he's caught you with his wife? Would an American guy or an Australian guy, would they be crazy if he came from home from work early and he caught you with his wife and he went ballistic? Would he be crazy? No. Who, who is going to be happy about you seeing uh, the, their, their girlfriend or their wife? I mean, um, no, all time men are crazy. There might be, but not for that reason. I think everybody in the world's crazy when it comes to relationships. So, And the thing about this, what I said to him, he said um, her boyfriend's in the army. Well... You know, you're just putting your hand in the fire and hoping your skin doesn't get burnt. Because can you imagine the contacts he's got? Maybe in the airport, James comes through the airport on vacation, two months down the line, and this guy's, uh, this girl's husband or boyfriend is put the word about. Really, really dangerous. I mean, you're, you're right up there. Like, if I had a top 100 things not to do in Thailand, this would be, like, number one. Do not date a girl who's got a Thai boyfriend, and especially in the military. That is, you know, um, I mean, all due respect to James, I did let him know about this, and I told him in no certain terms that he should just not only walk away, he should run away. Don't say goodbye. Don't say it was nice knowing you. Delete her, delete her messages. Don't say goodbye and run. What does she want? I've asked her to go to another part of Thailand as my date. I would pay for the trip. Well, she ain't going to pay for it. Um, on my next trip her response was she wouldn't know how to pull this off without her boyfriend being suspicious what are your thoughts on these stories right well i've told you my thoughts um pfft, taking her to an island she's got a, a boyfriend who's in the army no uh I, i'm not going to say any more about it because i'm going on about it now but really that's about it i just wanted to discuss these points and i hope the guy you two james and adam i hope you're not upset by my, my response because the whole point of this channel i don't want it to be a bullshit channel I don't want to say things that aren't true and I don't want to give people false expectations when they go to Thailand. I just, you know, it's just from my experience. I try to pass on what I know and I've answered those two messages as best as I can. Um, I haven't exaggerated and I meant every word I said. Um, and as I said at the beginning of this video, guys, if you want to get in contact, please do. I like it because it gives more validity to the um, the channel. There's no, you know, the whole point of a YouTube channel about somewhere like Thailand. Yeah, I can sit in front of a camera and give you all my thoughts. But if I don't get anything back, then I can't discuss it with you guys. And it's not going to be so interesting. Not only, I mean, for entertainment purposes, it's good to do that anyway. But it's also, 
I do get a lot of messages from guys who haven't been to Thailand before and they write to me and say, look, I'm going next year. Glad I found your channel. I've learned a few bits and bobs. I mean, one guy wrote to me yesterday on that top 20 um, things I don't like about Thailand. What he actually said was he knew all of them and it was all common sense. But the one he hadn't heard of is the um, apartment deposit scam, which he now knows about and he thanked me for. So there's always good information to learn from channels like this. Not only mine, obviously. Um, Okay, so that's it for this time around, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.